Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here, and yes, that is right, the SVD has been buffed by BSG, but somehow this has gone unnoticed by the community so far. Before we continue, this video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet, and today we have a solution to the true horror that is losing such an important thing with all of your precious cards inside. We've all been there, and it absolutely sucks. But here I have the latest innovation from the designers at Ridge, which is their smart wallet attachments. And there's two versions here, just like the usual cash holding devices. One is the cash strap, and the other is the money clip like this. And I converted over one of the Ridge wallets that I've got in about one minute. It was super easy. The standard styles look like this with the AirTag under the white cover. The AirTag holder here is an enhanced version with a carbon fiber cap to cover the white AirTag for a sleeker look, and it doesn't compromise the design in any way. It's still able to hold the 12 usual cards super securely and works with any of the cool designs on offer across the Ridge range. With these AirTag additions, you could use the Find My Network if your wallet goes missing, giving you that peace of mind for what is honestly a vital piece of kit these days and a major hassle if it gets lost. This is also the perfect time to buy as Ridge is running a summer sweepstakes in partnership with Hennessy with a chance to win a brand new upgraded Ford Bronco or $75,000 in cash. You'll get 10 bonus entries as well as 10% off if you use my link ridge.com forward slash gig of Ridge in the description and the code gig of Ridge at the checkout. As usual the Ridge team are so confident that you'll be converted to their products that they have a 99 day test drive period after which you can get your money back if you don't love it and and a lifetime warranty if you do. So if you're on the fence, now is the best time to get one at ridge.com forward slash gigaridge to join the 80,000 strong five-star rated proud owners of the Ridge wallet. So fortunately, we've looked at the SVD very recently when comparing it to the SVT, which is probably the reason why it was buffed in the first place. So we have the old stats to hand and the default version used to be 30 ergonomics with 153 vertical recoil. Now this has been improved to 35.5 ergo and 114 recoil, which is a huge change, approximately 25% lower recoil than it had previously. So let's start by having a look at a few of these builds where the SVD can technically get down to now in terms of recoil, some optimized builds and something mid-level for Punisher Part 6. So here's the SVD that I've been using. We're going to look at this in one second, but first off, let's just see where we can get down to. So let's go on to Prapple 3, which is where he sells this basic default SVD with the stats that we talked about, 35 and a half ergo and 114 vertical recoil, which is significantly better than it has been in the past. Now there's two ways to mod the SVD. The first way is using the upper band, which is basically the way that it comes. The other way is to use this SAG Mark I chassis, this thing here. This technique gets you more ergonomics, but less recoil. Going the upper band route can, in theory, get you to the lowest vertical recoil version, but with slightly less ergo. So we're going to start with this one first, just to see, because vertical recoil is it's the stat that we try to min-max the most out of all of them. So onto this, we're going to change over the handguard. We only have two options. The SVD modernized rail is the best one. This does come on Prapple 3, so you can actually buy this once you get to Prapple 3, the same level as uh, you could buy the SVDs from him directly. And then, as usual, we will be putting on the MLock 4.1 inch rail, and onto that, the RK2 vertical foregrip for maximum recoil reduction just to see where we can get to. Onto this we can add the SVDS thread adapter on the muzzle. I do wish the SVD had some more loud muzzles that kind of compared to the suppressor because the suppressor reduces the vertical recoil by 22. You can see this goes from 97 in this particular configuration down to 76 which is a huge difference in my opinion and I feel like it's a mistake not to use the suppressor honestly like the fact that people a don't know it's necessarily a suppressed SVD because it's very distinctive when it's loud and also the fact that you get this recoil reduction I think it's definitely worthwhile even though it is a bit expensive. The other thing that you can do with the SVD is changing over the stock. So we'll use the SVDS adapter and technically again in theory the best one is the Mesa Crosshair buffer tube. This one is locked behind some high level quests so normally people won't have access to it at this point and it's really expensive on the flea normally. And onto this we're going to add the PRS Gen 3. Now there's one extra thing you can do with this variant of the SVD which is this part here which is not immediately obvious but it's the SVD modernized top rail. So you can put this on and this gets you down to 54 vertical recoil, which I would say is pretty crazy given the SVD is the gun that it is on semi-auto. I know that the SVT exists now, which is probably the reason for this, but this is very usable, especially given that you have to use it for Punisher Part 6. So from here, there's a few other things that we want to do. We probably want to be using the 20 round magazine. This only reduces one ergo, so we probably should do that. Pistol grips, if we want to make this fully min-max, then you add this guy, the AGS-74. But I mean, you can see we only have two and a half ergonomics on the whole gun, so you know, whether that's even worth doing is really up to you. What we want to do from here is optimize this. So normally I won't leave it here at 54. I think the old best recoil build used to be 69, so if we can achieve that, then that'll be good. Normally, I like to use the SE5. It's up to you, really, as to whether you want to go with the RK1 
RK1 Canted or the SE5. I like the SE5 to increase the ergonomics because I think that has more impact upon the SVD than other guns that start with higher ergo. I think that the value of six ergonomics or so is bigger at zero ergo, so I tend to use this. And then the MT Crosshair, I normally swap that out for the ARE, which is a Mechanic 4 part, so not really accessible right now for most people. But once we get to this point, then we could use one of the stocks like the MOE Carbine. It doesn't really matter which color we choose. Let's go for the olive one today. And we'll put the butt pad on the back of that, which is a high level gunsmith quest unlock. And we can stick those on. That gets us to 30.5 ergonomics, which is a lot more palatable than it was originally and 63 vertical recoil, which I honestly think is a really good middle ground if you have all the stuff unlocked and you're using this in the late game. This is probably not accessible right now for people, but what we're going to do first is we're going to go over to the other side and the other version just to see where this gets to. So rather than using the upper band, we're going to go to the SAG Mark 1 instead. This has its own custom cut cover. We're going to add the same vertical foregrip on and we'll go back to the Mesa just to look at the technical min recoil build. So this variant gets us to eight and a half ergonomics and 60 vertical recoil. So they are kind of similar. You get a little bit more ergo here. So obviously when we start swapping these things out for say the SE5, and then we put on the ARE and we go back to our stock combo, that now has 36.5 ergonomics and 69 vertical recoil, which you know is, is fine. It depends on which way you want to go. I normally just go for the lower vertical recoil because I think it does make a significant difference to the weapon. And I just suffer a little bit of ergonomics. It's not really that bad, right? It's like we lose maybe six ergo or something. So the last thing is let's look at the gun that I've been using which is this one in stash. This is the one that I've played a raid with already and I think it feels really, really nice. So in the edit preset, this guy, we've got pretty much all the stuff we talked about before. I went through the UB variant, the upper band variant. We had it on the modernization rail from Prapor himself. The modernization top rail I bought from the flea market because yeah, you can get these about the same price as Prapor. And then from here, I added this, the ATP. This ATP buffer tube, because this comes on skier, and we can't get access to most of these good ones. The ARE comes at Mechanic 4. You could technically try to buy a red one, but they're like 56,000 rubles. I just don't think it's really worth spending that amount of money. The MT Crosshair is locked behind high level quests. So I think that the ATP is not a bad choice. We've used this on the M4 build that I made recently, and this gives you minus two and a half recoil, which is not bad. So we're going to use that. And then because we don't have the butt pads unlocked right now, we're going to use the next best bang for buck stock, which is the Chris Defiance DS150. This has one more recoil and one less ergonomics than the MOE Carbine, but it is actually quite a lot cheaper, to be honest. And it comes at level three traders, I believe. So with this combination and an MOE AK, we don't need to go all the way up to the AGS, but the MOE AK, well, this gives you 12 ergonomics as opposed to something like the saw pistol grip, which only gives you 11. So it depends on whether you want that one ergonomics or not. I think on the SVD, it probably is worth it. And even though the ergo is only 19.5 on this particular build, I found the vertical recoil at 68, really, really good. This is basically where the gun used to be in its fully decked out, full vertical recoil maximizing mode. But now you can get this kind of at level three traders and a little bit of flea market. In terms of scopes, you might be interested to see that I have a Voodoo on here. I've not really used many of these high powered LPVOs because they do tend to be really expensive. It's quite a decent bar to here for two G Phone Xs, which means that sometimes you can get the Voodoo for under 70k, which I actually think is pretty good. So this costs about 250,000 rubles for the entire thing, plus the cost of the scope. So yeah, you need it for Punisher 6. It is expensive, but I think it may well be worth giving it a try if you have the funds to support it. So far, I've played a single raid with the new recoil SVD, which I will show you now, which I used to start working on Punisher Part 6. And I have to say, it does feel pretty good. We could go through here, or we could go all the way up into... Idea, I guess? There's someone. Yeah, we should reload really before doing this. What's in here? It's PS. Scav? Play. Player with an HPC, which I kind of want to fraud if I'm honest with you. Don't want to get caught in the middle of doing this because I'll feel particularly stupid if I do. I'm going to swap all of this over. 
There we go. There we go. That's the way. That's how we do it. Now, I'm guessing this guy found that in this box over here. Yeah, drop your armor away the HPC. Exactly. That's what I'm going to do. There we are. Hopefully. I don't know if that will get spotted. Hopefully not. HPC isn't found in raid. No. Oh, it must. Yeah, sorry. I, he didn't find it on the stash then, did he? He must have brought it in with him. Very true. Very true. I haven't heard any scabs shooting over here, though. I think you wonder. We can kill them with the ump, though. And not waste the time, which is good. This guy's gone all the way along here. He didn't go down to the stash, did he? Wouldn't have thought so. We might die doing this, but... You know, gotta get kills. Dude is extremely heavy. Okay. Yeah, it looked like he was doing the stop-start thing. He must have had some some good stuff. Oh my god, he killed the... Uh... Wait, no, that's a... that's... Interesting. Okay. Let's have a think about what we're going to do here then. So yeah, the DVL, I don't know if the DVL is really worth taking. Like, that's rubbish. We'll take the, this, that. Croutons don't really care about. We'll just eat those. Put the stock on your SVD. Uh, I don't really want to. Now we're 66, now we're 60 something kilos. We've got to get to railway. Off we go. Off we go, baby. Get off. Don't even think about it. Maybe we can. Did you hear that metal step? Holy hell. Only 2k XP. We killed three people, which is pretty good. So as always, a big shout out to all my patrons and have fun in your raids.